Welcome to VectorWorks Spotlight 2014. We believe the art of design drives the entire creative process, and to that end, we provide a software solution that'll help you find your balance. This year, you'll find a host of improvements that'll help you and your team maximize your workflow and balance your individual creativity with accurate design information. In previous versions of Spotlight, any geometry could be converted to a lighting position. And it still can, of course. But now, in 2014, creating lighting pipes and ladders has never been easier. The new tool for lighting pipe objects streamlines the process of creating lighting position pipes that can not only be customized for 2D and 3D graphic attributes, but also for center spacing, origin, and snapping. You'll also create custom spaced tick marks or loci along the lengths of the pipe. Along with the lighting pipe object, we've also included the lighting pipe ladder tool. This tool lets you create vertical boom positions and ladders that can also be customized with rung spacing and 2D graphics. This new tool will help you spend less time custom modeling and more time designing. In the past, hardwired instrument summaries were associated to individual lighting positions. Also, the instrument key had no ordering or format options and little control over the information displayed. The new instrument summary tool gives you easy access to information for either your lighting instruments or positions to create highly customized instrument key and position summaries. You can customize your summaries through the comprehensive build list, adding only the necessary information. You can then customize the appearance of your summaries through the object info palette. In addition to the instrument summary tool, we've also introduced a new lighting symbol maintenance function. Running this command lets you view all objects with lighting information record attached that are in your current document you have the ability to view, edit, and replace records attached to lighting objects in one easy dialog. Your lighting inventory and light plot setup has never been easier. The lighting device object has received a boost with features that are sure to make your workflow more efficient. For starters, a new option allows you to draw beam vertically, so you can see the full height of the beam clearly at a focus point. You also now have the ability to add additional default records to lighting device symbols through the Spotlight Preferences dialog box. Yes, anything you want. Plus, it's no longer necessary to carefully type in the name of the desired label legend in order to assign it to an instrument. You can now select label legends from a drop-down list displaying all the legends in the current file. Nice. And next we have a twofer by Dimmer and Channel. With Dimmer per circuit offered in many venues, more people choose to twofer by both Dimmer and Channel. So now the ganging tool can twofer by both the dimmer and channel so these twofered lighting devices stay synced even if you only change one. Along with the overall improvements to our lighting device object, we've also included the ability to select all lighting devices associated with a focus point. Simply right click on the focus point and select focused lighting devices. You can now easily adjust common settings such as the draw beam all at once for multiple devices. If you've ever forgotten to associate an accessory with a lighting instrument while placing it in your model, you'll appreciate this new feature. You can now select the accessory symbol as well as the lighting device and then convert the selection to an accessory. You can use the same command to change the association of an accessory from one lighting device to another. Just like that.
Another improvement that can help enhance your modeling workflow is the ability for 3D geometry converted into lighting positions to retain their proper Z height. This means you set your lighting position trims before or after the geometry is converted into a lighting position, whatever works for you. We greatly enhance the Label Legend tool to create a far better user experience. For example, you can now create a brand new Label Legend from a lighting device that has a Label Legend that you've just customized. Just choose Create Label Legend from Lighting Device. You can then name the Label Legend and it'll be placed among the other legends in the document with your changes intact. To further make customization of your Label Legend easy, we've included a quick way to replace the Lighting Device reference symbol for the key to instrumentation graphic. This will save several steps through the Label Legend Manager each time. This feature lets you locate Label Legend in Resource Browser. You can now right-click on your light device and select Locate Label Legend in Resource Browser. So rather than spending time locating the appropriate Label Legend, this feature will find it for you in the Resource Browser. I think you'll find these new features make the Label Legend tool far more efficient and easy to use. Seating layouts are a powerful tool for rapidly creating and arranging banquet, classroom, or theater-style seating. A few small enhancements make this tool even faster. When using the Create Event Seating command, you'll now be asked if you'd like to set the focal point of the seating layout as part of the creation process. You'll also notice that we've added a button to the Seating Layout options in the Object Info palette named Focus Front. This option points the seats to each face of the seating polygon in succession. You'll find using the Event Seating command has made creating seating layouts much easier. And now here's something to get excited about. For 2014, OpenGL has experienced a number of improvements and will no doubt become your direct modeling rendering mode of choice. This feature isn't really a single new object or tool, rather it's more of a collection of changes that'll let you remain in 3D OpenGL views during modeling and drafting. Let's take a look at some of the improvements. First, notice how when you select an object, you get an entire bounding box surrounding the object, not just a rectangular shape. Next, once you've selected an object and move it, notice how the entire scene does not need to be re-rendered, only the object that was relocated. Thanks to our new occlusion control, you'll no longer accidentally snap to corner vertices beyond an object. Notice how I can select an object from anywhere within the selection box and not just by the edge. If you have RenderWorks, let's look at OpenGL when Use Shadows has been selected. You can see how the shadows are more accurate and are more fluid as they move across the model. Here we'll switch from one layer to another while the layer control is set to gray others. Once again, notice how the rendering mode stays in OpenGL with no need to go to wireframe. In this segment, the image has been rendered in a rendering style other than OpenGL. However, once the walkthrough tool has been chosen, the rendering mode changes and stays in OpenGL and does not revert to wireframe, resulting in accurate and clear indications of what you're seeing and doing. And just to reinforce that, we'll use the Clip Cube tool and change the viewing angle of this element. Notice how the view stays in OpenGL. Once again, no more reverting to wireframe. And in this segment, we'll take a look at how objects appear when the Draw Edges option is chosen. Oh yeah, much cleaner and much smoother. I like that. 
I'd also like to add one more important benefit. With this graphic improvement, direct modeling is not only fun, but all the operations are smooth and accurate. And finally, to wrap up, check out the new functionality of the X-Ray Select Mode. We'll use the B key to explore wireframe skeletons while navigating in OpenGL. And before I close this segment, don't forget to navigate using one of these good-looking gadgets. It just works. In a continuing effort to help you embrace the concept of designing in 3D, we now have a couple of new additions to the direct modeling family of tools. The first, Taper Face. Let's start with a simple cube and from the 3D modeling tool set, we'll select Taper Face. First, we'll select a planar face as the base reference. Then, select the face you want to modify. The new widget will preview the direction. Then, simply drag and release. For a precise angle, you can input values into the heads-up display. Taper face can be used to widen the base of solids and make tops narrow and lets you get very creative when modifying solid subtractions. In its simplest form, the tool will help you explore new design ideas by deforming solid objects. Let's take a look at this massing model and explore some design alternatives. With the Tangent Faces mode, you can quickly and directly pitch all the rooftops and explore different design alternatives for this building, something not easily accomplished previously. Continuing in the same vein of direct modeling, we have a twist for you, the Twist Face tool. Many examples exist in the landscape and in entertainment and lighting design, as well as architecture. Starting with a solid object, it's simply a matter of selecting a base reference face and then letting the protractor widget give you visual clues regarding the amount of twist placed on an object. You can also twist multiple objects. Notice the heads-up display giving you the opportunity to input a specific number of degrees of twist. So now, go get wrapped up in your work. This is truly direct modeling taken to the next level. The next feature involves complex line type export. Last year in Vectorworks 2013, we introduced line types. Now in Vectorworks 2014, these line types can be exported to DWG format as true DXF DWG line types. Simply uncheck complex line types as blocks in the DWG export dialog to ensure this feature. With that box unchecked, Vectorworks will create the appropriate SHX files that will be placed alongside the DWG after the export completes. The next feature is support for named true colors. Vectorworks 2014 now includes support for named true colors in both the import and export of DWG files. Any named colors included in the DWG during import will be imported as named Vectorworks colors. This will occur automatically for imports. On the export side, checking the box for use true colors must be checked in order for these types of colors to be exported properly. The next item is the Publish command. In the final stages of a project, no matter what your profession, you'll need to publish drawing sets for your project's various stakeholders and collaborators. Therefore, we've created the new Publish command. This new option will let you produce customized file sets in a number of common formats right from a single dialog box. When using the Publish command, you can pick and choose one or more sheets save views, or even other Vectorworks files, as well as the export formats including PDF, DWG, DWF, and print. This means that from a single location you can set up and even save a set of files to be produced, then click OK and go on about your business as Vectorworks produces all the necessary files to your specified location.
Scripting with Vectorworks Embedded Vector Script Programming Language is a feature some of our users have employed to create custom plugins. However, in an effort to offer a broader world of custom scripting, you can now utilize the Python 3 scripting language and its thousands of libraries to efficiently develop scripts for Vectorworks. Python is known as a modern and popular scripting language with a large base of students, academics, and professionals around the world who learn how to program with this easily accessible open source code. Imagine if you could develop research projects in your school, develop tools that take advantage of operating system settings, connect your georeference drawings to web map services, push the boundaries of your workflows by incorporating online resources, dynamically connect IFC data to your building information models from the cloud, execute automatic tasks such as email notifications, or create your own customized tools and commands. The possibilities are limitless. Here's a new tool that's been added to RenderWorks repertoire. The brick shader lets you create a realistic representation of bricks, panels, or tiles as a texture. While this feature existed in previous versions, you're now able to add a secondary brick texture as well as control when and where it appears separate from the main texture. Not only that, but you now have complete control over the size and appearance of what would be the grout lines. You can select either a combination of colors or a texture for the fill. Whether you alternate row and column styles or apply a more randomized look, you'll gain hours of time in your workflow because now you don't have to tediously model each and every brick. This change also means you can take a picture of bricks that already exist in the real world and then create a much more realistic brick texture that'll match an existing wall. Finally, here's an example of many of the brick and masonry textures that ship with RenderWorks 2014. So enjoy! It's now possible to apply a displacement map in addition to a simple bump map to a RenderWorks texture. While at first this may appear to be the same as a regular bump map, Displacement mapping actually alters the existing geometry to create a more realistic surface effect. This is most obvious where you can see the displacement map is capable of creating geometry that casts shadows even upon itself, allowing you to create very detailed textures that can be applied to a wide range of objects. This type of shader can greatly improve the overall look of renderings that contain tiles, bricks, water, and more. Not only can displacement textures emulate different materials and surfaces, but entire city blocks as well, all while keeping base geometry to a minimum. And let's not forget to have a look at what's new for our Vectorworks Service Select members. To start, in many cases, you'll find that there's no need to create 3D models from scratch. We have new content for you. From several varieties of wall sections and details that you can use and modify, to several new arrowway textures, to many more types and styles of furniture. Check it out. We've also included a number of video clips, including some really informative tutorials and tips and tricks focusing on items like drawing organization, georeferencing, lighting techniques, the issue manager, worksheets, custom title blocks, and more. So come on over and see what's new. So for this year, we invite you to capture that perfect balance between design and technology with Vectorworks 2014.